Hello, Internet. It's Jess from Just Like Stuff, and I'm here to talk about episode three, season one of Twin Peaks. This is called Zen and the Skill to Catch a Killer. This was a fantastic episode. Everyone's idiosyncrasies were in full effect. Uh, the dialogue was really on point. There's so many tiny little moments that I loved. Um, if you haven't seen one of my Watch With Me's before, I'm not going to go into every single specific that happened. I'm just going to talk about some stuff that I liked and enjoyed in my possible theories as to what is going to be next in the series. This episode opened up with the, th the Horn family having a dinner and Audrey, the sexy teen, was there. Her mother and father and her brother in a full Indian headdress humming and rocking to himself and then all of a sudden this guy walks in and the I forget what, what's his name uh, Jerry walks in brother Jer and Ben and Jer Ben and Jer can we talk about that for a minute Ben and Jer uh, talk about Jer just came back from Paris and he has this sandwich that was delicious and he brought some for his brother and then they eat it voraciously and talk to each other with full full mouths that was kind of strange and then they talk about going to a to see the new girl at when i jacks it is a casino on the other side of the canadian border oh, my cat doing cat things uh, it's a pretty creepy location, uh, so, what is it, Ben and Jerry Horn go up there to have sex with ladies. It was pretty disturbingly shot, I mean, it was beautifully shot, but it was disturbing to watch. Uh, there was just a lot of foreboding in it, and they also made a connection between, because they said, they wanted to see a new girl, she was from a perfume counter, and there was a connection because Ronette, the other girl who was not killed but injured when Laura Palmer died, also was at the, also worked at the perfume counter. So, connections there. Um, a really beautiful, a beautiful cat, a beautiful piece of acting in this scene was the new prostitute that Ben and Jerry went to go see when Ben approaches her to go into the back room to have sex he, she played it so well on her face it wasn't like the usual prostitute like hooray for me I'm gonna have sex with a stranger it was like oh shit this is happening right now I guess I better have fun Oh, other side note about the one-eyed jack prostitutes, they all, all of them had like 90s weird lingerie and it was all black, white, and red, kind of like a poker themed, which I thought was amusing. Another scene that stuck out to me was Bobby and his friend Mike go into the woods to meet Leo about the drug deal that has gone bad. Um, it was so beautifully shot. David Lynch directed this. He did such a good job. It was very Kubrick-esque in a lot of it, especially later on, which I'll touch on, the Red Room really was, to me, looked a lot like The Shining. During this scene, Leo hints that he knows a little bit about Laura Palmer. He said that she was a wild one and kind of looks off into the who knows where and thinks about it. So I think, like I said before, he's a scary guy. And he definitely knows something more about Laura Palmer. There's also a small moment in it where Bobby thinks he sees someone f watching the drug dealer drug deal going down. And we don't know if Leo knew that guy was there or like who that guy was. That was strange. Also a small detail I loved is that Bobby drives a Trans Am. And I'm like, of course Bobby would drive a Trans Am. Side note, I love Trans Ams. Another little thing I loved was the invitation to love. I thought at first it was maybe a commercial for 
um, perfume, but I guess it's actually a commercial for a um, soap opera, and it's just so soap opera-y, and uh, Laura Flynn Boyle's character watches or sees the commercial, and Laura Flynn Boyle and her boyfriend, they have this scene where it's just so sappy and so much like a soap opera. I like that very much. I kind of wonder what else is going to go on with the invitation to love. Agent Cooper, this episode, cute as a button. He finishes, he finishes whittling his uh, whistle and toots it. Uh, he also does this Tibetan deduction technique that he heard about in a dream. Very odd. Uh, where he throws a rock at a bottle, uh, says a name, throws a rock at a bottle, and if it breaks or if the bottle hits it, he knows that he needs to go after that lead. And in Laura Palmer's journal, she said the day that she was murdered that she was nervous to meet Jay, so they had written down all of the Jay names. And the bottle broke on Leo Johnson and then pinged on other ones. I forget which one. But yeah, that was really interesting to see. And it was kind of like the fuck kind of a moment. like, And everyone was going along with it. Come here, kitty cat. Is that what you wanted? Uh, no, none of the, the sheriffs thought it was too strange, which was also weird. But it's kind of cool to see that, that they wouldn't just be like, that they trust Agent Cooper. I like that about it. So the last thing is, the last, the huge thing that happened was Agent Cooper's dream. He had a, look like old age makeup on. There was a dancing dwarf. It was in a red room with Laurel Palmer and she whispers something in his ears. They talk in a, it sounds like they recorded it and like played it backwards and then forwards. Very interesting. And the one-armed man shows up and a guy named Bob. Bob and Mike. No, Bob. Yeah, Bob and Mike. Mike's the one-armed man, I believe. Yes, he's the one-armed man. And Mike is kind of giving this uh, poem. He's, t he's saying a poem. And it has, he says in it, fire, walk with me, which was a piece of paper they found where they, where Laura Palmer and... Ronette had been tortured. Yes, and that killer Bob guy, he said something about putting his death mask over and killing again. Uh, disturbing dream, beautifully shot. The kicker of it, and it ends in an awesome way this episode. Dale wakes from his dream. Cooper, Agent Dale Cooper wakes from his dream with a little hair sticking up on the side of his face, uh, on the side of his hair, which is really cute. And calls the sheriff and says, I know who killed Laura Palmer. And the sheriff's like, so are you going to, we going to like do this right now? He's like, no, I can wait for the morning. And there's this music play, there's music playing that uh, he starts snapping to. That was the music in his dream. I thought that was very interesting. At this point in the story, we know that keep an eye on Leo Johnson. And that there's a connection with the Horn family, possibly, and with... Uh, One-Eyed Jacks that maybe Laura Palmer worked there. Yes, it's getting very good. I cannot wait to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're watching with me. Bye-bye.